What is the seed of life? Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Dear viewing audience, through the message of Dr. J. Rock Lee, may you let the seed of life sprout and grow within you and lead a healthy and blessed life. Before a man is given the Holy Spirit, the seed of life remains as if he were dead. And thus, the spirit inside the heart remains still with no strength at all. Instead, the soul governs the heart and the body moves according to the desire set to the flesh. So, uh, since the spirit, which is the master, was not active, the soul controls the mind and made the body work according to the desire of the flesh. So God said, in Genesis, that he would never be with the man of flesh forever. Why did God say he would never be with the man of flesh? because the man of flesh is controlled by Satan. However, there is a being that can control the soul of a man. It is Satan. You should listen to this message in faith and realize that your fleshly thoughts are controlled by Satan. You shouldn't say, no way, it, the, it is I who control my own mind. You should realize you have been controlled by Satan. Satan is the heart of Lucifer, and when it controls the heart of man, it makes him think in evil ways, not in good ways. So, most people think in evil ways instead of thinking in good ways, whatever they see or hear. Satan doesn't motivate him to forgive or love others. So Satan makes people think in evil ways. Satan makes people become jealous and envious. It makes people judge and condemn and hate and think in evil ways. And so the Bible says in Romans that the thought of the flesh is hostile toward God because it is controlled by Satan. The enemy devil and Satan stand against God. So how terrible it is to be controlled by Satan who stands against God. Satan rather incites him to hate and have ill feelings against others. She makes him envy, judge, and condemn others. Once a man is incited by Satan as it is, the devil begins to work and instigate him to put the evil idea into action. 
So, when people are incited by Satan, they accept Satan's control in many thoughts. Then, the devil works and makes them put the evil thoughts into actions. So, making people put an evil you know, making you know, people put an evil thought into an action is the work of the enemy devil. And Satan works through uh, mind and thoughts. Then, not being able to control his feelings, an individual criticizes others, calls others bad names, and uses you know, violence against them. At first, he criticized others or called them bad names in his heart. But now, the devil works so that he speaks out to criticize others, and he you know, practices you know, violence against others. The work of the devil comes out eventually. According to the desire set to the flesh, he leads an you know, intemperate life or a life of debauchery. The Bible says the man of God never commits sin. So now, you say you believe in God and you call God your father. But if you commit sin, it means you are incited by Satan and the devil, and thus you commit sin. This is the way a man lives his life because his spirit has no strength as the seed of life doesn't sprout. So those who commit sin like this or put it into practice are those whose spirit has no strength at all. The seed of life didn't sprout. Even if you receive the Holy Spirit and become the child of God, unless you have your seed of life sprout, it results in like this. Even when you pray, you don't get an answer. When people catch cold or flu, you also catch cold and flu, like other worldly people do. You are not protected, and you become tired like the worldly people do. After you work hard, you become tired just as other worldly people do. The people of God should be different. Even though you say you live as a Christian, you just go to church and manage a fleshly faith, fleshly believing life, not in a spiritual way. Your seed of life didn't sprout, and so you are weak. You are just as you used to be before you accepted the Lord. And thus, Satan and the enemy devil play with you and make you commit sin and do all kinds of the works of the flesh. Since his spirit doesn't work, his soul has become the master. So he is the man of soul. And his soul was incited by Satan, which is the uh, spiritual being of darkness. Those who don't receive the Holy Spirit think that it is they themselves that judge and make decisions, but they are confused and mistaken. They don't realize that they are being craftily incited by Satan. However, once the Holy Spirit comes and the seed of life sprouts, the situation changes. The spirit, which has remained still as if it were dead, comes to life, and the work of life finally begins. Now, this spirit is controlled by the Holy Spirit. How? As you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and received the Holy Spirit in your heart, the living Holy Spirit controls the seed of life. That's how and that's why. Since the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth, He leads you to the truth. The Holy Spirit leads you into the truth and into the light and into the goodness. So the Holy Spirit leads into the goodness, but Satan leads the people of the flesh and the people of the soul to the opposite direction, into the evil, untruth, and darkness. If there is a man you cannot easily forgive, the Holy Spirit reminds you of the forgiveness and love of the Lord so that you can eventually forgive the man. As you obey the supervision of the Holy Spirit and forgive the man, the spiritual love will come into your heart and your spirit will grow up all the more to that extent. 
So as you follow the desire of the Holy Spirit and obey Him, the opposite evil attributes are removed, and to that extent, you make the spiritual growth. And to that extent, you make a spiritual growth, you are given the spiritual faith and strength. Say, you have become a man who can keep a certain promise or a commitment even in a situation when it's really difficult to keep. Then, the changing and sly heart will disappear, and the spirit will grow up to the extent the heart will become more true and sincere. Let's say, you made a promise with your friend, Hey, let's meet for tomorrow lunch. Then, you got a call from another friend. He asked you to have a meeting for a business proposal. He said, business would be a good chance to make you rich. So you didn't want to miss this opportunity, and so you made a promise that you would meet him for lunch tomorrow. We will meet at 11 tomorrow and talk about the business. The business will surely make both of us rich. You made a promise like this. Now, you should cancel the meeting that you originally made. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry. I know we are going to meet tomorrow, but um, I think we should cancel it because I'll have an original meeting tomorrow. It means you have a changing of mind and you have a heart of lies to cancel the meeting you originally made. You can never enter the spirit this way. You can never enter the light. You should become a man who will keep your promise in any situation. No matter what you can gather from something, you should keep the original meeting or promise that you made. When you keep on doing like this again and again, it will be the way to enter the Spirit. It is a way to have trust relation with others and with God. In other words, to the extent you obey the Word of God as the Holy Spirit governs, the Spirit inside your heart will grow up actively. As the Spirit grows up like this and evil disappears from within your heart, then your heart is called to become the heart of the Spirit. So if you follow the desire of the Holy Spirit in small and big things like this, the evil in you will gradually disappear. It cannot remain in you, but it will disappear. If you continue doing like it for you know, about a month, two, half a year or a year, and on and on, all evil will disappear. But the problem is that you change your mind. Before a benefit, you change your mind and break promises. You have a cunning heart, he says. These things make it difficult for you to enter the Spirit. Without removing them, you cannot enter the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit in your heart grows up to the extent you obey the Word of God as the Holy Spirit inspires you. You should keep this in your mind. As your spirit grows up and eventually all evil disappears in your heart, we can say you have the heart of the Spirit. Furthermore, if your heart is entirely filled with goodness and love, your heart becomes the heart of whole Spirit. So when your heart is filled up with goodness and love, you have the heart of the whole spirit. A man whose heart becomes a heart of spirit or of whole spirit in this way becomes a being of the spiritual dimension, even though he lives in the fleshly world. Since his mind is controlled by the spirit, no fleshly idea hits upon him in any situation. He only thinks in goodness, and in truth. So when you see and hear in goodness and truth, untruth cannot be heard. And the people beside you talk about untruth. You don't hear them. 
There are many mysterious things in the spiritual realm once you enter the deep level of the spirit. There is a foul smell, but if you don't want to smell it, then you don't smell the foul smell. Even in a restaurant, if you don't want to smell it, the smell doesn't come into you. The same goes with what you hear. Untruth doesn't come into you. Any fleshly idea, I mean no fleshly idea hits upon him in his situation. So you always see in goodness and speak in goodness. And so no peace with others is broken. Peace is not broken. Okay? In addition, he doesn't have any doubt about the work of God. And his flesh doesn't ride the fleshly flow, but it is controlled in the dimension of the spirit. This is important. Well, let me tell you the reason. As the heart, of, as the heart becomes the heart of spirit, the size of the spirit becomes big enough to cover the entire nucleus of the cell, which is the focal thing of his body. As the heart becomes the heart of spirit, the size of the spirit becomes big enough to cover the entire nucleus of the cell. The size of the spirit for a man of whole spirit is, well, it is the size of the spirit for a man of whole spirit talking about, okay? A lot bigger, I mean, the size of the spirit for a man of whole spirit is a lot bigger than the nucleus. It is more than enough to cover the nucleus. The spirit and the whole spirit is so different like this. Once the spirit covers the nucleus, that is the most central focal core of the body, what will happen next? The control of all the body functions will be governed, not in the fleshly dimension, but in the spiritual dimension. So the control of the body will be governed, not in the fleshly dimension, but in the spiritual dimension. I said earlier that those who live in the Garden of Eden are controlled by the breath of life, which is the original power of God, even from the moment of their conception. Therefore, all the newly born babies are healthy and they grow up well to have the most beautiful and handsome outlook. There is no deformed baby. No baby dies at childbirth. They don't die while grow up. They have the body of the living being that never dies. And they grow up just to pass the age of a young man, and they don't get older any longer, but maintain their status. It is possible because the Garden of Eden is a spiritual place. The people in the Garden of Eden are all living beings. Now, even those who live on this earth also ride on the spiritual flow from the moment they have the heart of spirit. The control of all the body functions is managed in the spiritual dimension. Let me introduce some phenomena when the body is controlled in the spiritual dimension. First, all the organs of the body begin to function normally. For example, suppose a man has a stomach which does not function well and has a problem. He doesn't digest his food well and it causes him difficulties all the time. As he lives by the word of God and cultivates his heart into the spirit, his stomach will begin to function well and he may not even be aware of it. So, some parts of your body are not good when you are in the flesh, but once you enter the spirit, they all recover and change for good. It applies to other parts of his body as well. Since the control of his body is managed in the spiritual dimension, he can maintain the best condition. Even if it doesn't sleep well, he can easily overcome any possible fatigue. What happens when the control of the body is managed in the fleshly dimension? If he doesn't sleep well even for a day, his eyes become sore and his body feels heavy. Since his body isn't metabolizing food in a healthy manner, he loses ability to concentrate and desire to work well leaves him. That's why 
It is said in the world that good sleep is a good medicine and that sound sleep promises sound body. However, if the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, even if the sleeping hours are short, he can maintain good mental and physical condition. The worldly people say you need at least seven to eight hours of sleep a day. However, once you come into the spirit, just two or three hours will do. Why isn't it possible not to sleep at all? Why is it that you should sleep at least two to three hours? The reason is because you are living in a fleshly world. If you go to heaven later, you don't need to sleep eternally because heaven is a spiritual space. Even if you accomplish the heart of spirit, however, as long as you live in this fleshly world, you cannot ignore the justice of the fleshly world. In my case, it doesn't bother me much even if I don't sleep for a couple of days. However, if I don't sleep for too long, it seems that I cannot think of proper words as quickly as normally possible. So, when I don't sleep for many days, um, I cannot recall the names of, you know, pastors well. The names are in my hand, but I cannot recall them correctly. Well, I can deliver messages, because messages are delivered in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They have nothing to do with memory. So if I sleep for about an hour or two, I can soon recover and become normal, quickly. Once the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, you can stay healthy as you eat just the necessary amount of food. The fleshly people eat meat and look for wholesome food for time, you know, from time to time to stay healthy. Chances are, however, that even some people who eat so-called healthy food will become sick. Once the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, however, you can maintain your health even if you take in just the basic food. It is written in Mark 1, verse 6, that John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord, ate locusts and wild honey. He ate only locusts and wild honey. Until his day came, John the Baptist had remained in the wilderness and prepared for his future ministry. Since it was difficult to find food in the wilderness, he ate locusts and honey, but he was healthy. There was no one in assisting him. He only prayed to God and prepared the way for the Lord while he ate only locusts and wild honey. What about Daniel and his three friends? As they were captive to Babylon and lived in a palace, they were put into a situation that they were supposed to have eaten the king's choice food and drank the wine. For fear they should eat food that had been the sacrifice to idols or food that God prohibits them from eating, Daniel asked the overseer to allow them to eat only vegetables and to drink water. The overseer listened to him to test them and to make a decision according to the result. You know, these overseer cannot listen to them. Why? If the boys got sick or weak, it would be his responsibility. So he cannot listen to them. But the boys asked him to test him for 10 days. Daniel chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 says, At the end of 10 days, their appearance seemed better, and they were fatter than all the youths who had been eating the king's choice food. Their appearance looked better than other boys who ate the king's choice food. And they were fatter than them. So, the overseer continued to withhold their choice food and the wine they were to drink and kept giving them vegetables. Likewise, if the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, even if you eat only vegetables, you can be healthy. Daniel and his three friends already were the people of the Spirit, and thus they were not afraid of anything. These boys kept the word of God and the law of God. 
You don't actually seek for wholesome food. However, even the man of spirit should not violate the order of the flesh. Since the man of spirit has the ability to control himself, he doesn't overeat no matter how delicious a food may be. You know, when he feels you know, that it's enough, then he stops eating. He doesn't need to eat by force, does he? But still, if he doesn't eat for too long, chances are that his body may become weakened. We can live without eating in heaven. But in this fleshly space, we should take the minimum amount of nutrients. Especially when you enter into a long-term fasting, such as 21 days or 40 days, God provides you with the breath of life of heaven so that you can survive. Quite many members of this church fasted for 40 days, but they were all protected. No one died. In addition, if you eat proper recovery meals, your body can recover just in a few days. If the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimensions, secondly, germs and viruses cannot enter into you. No germs or virus can enter into you. Even if a germ or a virus does manage to get into your body, it doesn't harm you. Speaking metaphorically, it is like when a foreign substance is put into a burning furnace. It immediately burns or melts and disappears. Likewise, the body of the man of spirit or of whole spirit is surrounded by the power of God, and thus no diseases can slip into such a body. Don't I tell you all the time that even if you are disabled, you should come into the spirit quickly, and that your problems will be solved once you come into the spirit. But you do not obey, but just try to receive prayer. I tell you again to come into the Spirit and that all the body will function well. Your weak body will recover strong. And there is one thing that God made a promise with this message. He promised that He would bless those who keep this message in heart and practice it. God will bless you to recover health. Say, you don't have strength in your legs and cannot walk well. But if you listen to this message and keep it and practice it, you will come into spirit and hold spirit. Then God will give you strength so that you can recover quickly. God said, you would hear many testimonies after this message. Well, it's not just a blessing of health, but also a blessing of finance. Once you enter the spirit, the impossible will be possible. This is not what you yourself get. But it is God that gives you all this. So you are covered with the power of God. No disease can enter you. The first John, chapter 5, verse 18 says, We know that no one who is born of God sins. So, no one who is born of God commits sin. After you commit sin, after you commit sins that lead you into death, you cannot say you are a son or daughter of God or citizen of heaven. Why? Because it says we know that no one who is born of God sins. Of course, he cannot commit sin. 
Those of you who commit sin and do the works of the flesh should think whether you are born of God and whether you can be saved. Can you be saved if you die of an accident right now? You know you are not born of God. Where are you from then? From the enemy devil and Satan. Since you commit sin, you become slave to sin. But he who was born of God keeps him. The one who is born of God doesn't commit sin, and he who was born of God keeps him. And the evil one does not touch him. So the one who is born of God will not commit sin, and he who is born of God keeps him. And the evil one does not touch him. The enemy devil and Satan cannot touch him, not to mention diseases. From the moment I accepted the Lord till now, I've never caught cold. You know, when I was a you know, lay person, I mean, I've never got cold or flu. I've never got even a small disease. Before I accepted the Lord and God, I used to have many stomach upset many times. But after accepting the Lord and God, it never occurred to me at all. No skin diseases either. Well, recently, my eyes got red. But it was not a disease. And it was not contagious either. But God said it was to make my eyes brighter. As God said, I got better eyesight, don't you see now? So to make my body healthier or better, such things came to me. Other than them, no diseases have come into me. You have witnessed it for the last 28 years. So like this, the body of a man of the Spirit or of the whole Spirit is covered by the power of God, and thus no diseases come into him. For the last 37 years after I and my family accepted the Lord, since we have lived by the Word of God, I and my family have never been to hospital and never taken any medicine. The Word of God is absolute. In addition, the man of whole spirit is not harmed even if he drinks poison. You know, those of you who are not yet healed, those who want to be healed, those who are disabled, listen to this message carefully and have your problem solved. Soon, if God works, what is it that you cannot solve? The problem is, you have a wall of sin before God and you do not obey even when God tells you to come into the Spirit and Holy Spirit. Receiving prayer doesn't solve any, everything without coming into the Spirit. In addition, the man of Holy Spirit is not harmed even if he drinks poison. Of course, it is the case when he doesn't drink it willfully but against his will, or even he takes it mistakenly. But because you heard poison doesn't harm you, you cannot test it by yourself. Then you will not be protected, but die. But if you drink poison by force of others or by mistake, by mistake, then you will be protected and you will not die. For instance, there is an, act, there is an incident in Acts chapter 28 that a viper fastened itself on the hand of Apostle Paul. The natives who knew about the viper expected Apostle Paul was about to swell up or suddenly fell down dead. But nothing happened to Apostle Paul. Once the control of the body is managed in the spiritual dimension, third, you will not get old, but you may also get your youth back. So as you enter the spirit, aging stops. But when you know, so many years pass by, I think uh, people get aged a little. Just a little. So I think uh, the, the aging slows down. Aging process takes place very, very slowly. From the moment you accomplish the heart of spirit, and as soon as the spirit covers the cell's nucleus, the aging of body 
doesn't take place. So the spirit covers the nucleus that controls the body function, and then aging doesn't take place. Therefore, it is better to enter the spirit when you are young than to enter the spirit in your 40s or 50s, isn't it? So you'd better enter the spirit before you get old. Those of you who are in 20s, if you enter the spirit in 20s, it will be very nice. You'd better enter it at least in 30s, when you have a little wrinkles. So you'd better enter the spirit as you are young. It is better to come into the spirit after you argue with people. I mean, uh, before you argue with people. Isn't it better to enter the spirit before you get aged? Even if you're old already now, you don't need to worry about it. That's because you can reco recover your youth when you enter the stage of the whole spirit. I hope that you can correctly understand what it is to recover your youth back in this lecture. It doesn't mean that your outer physical appearance will become that of a 20-year-old when you recover your youth back, even when you are in your 60s. What well, don't you think it is quite late? I'm sorry to say this, but it's quite late to enter the spirit in the 60s. Say you enter the spirit in your 50s, then you may have wrinkles near your eyes because you had wrinkles already before you enter the spirit. However, getting youth back is that you know, God renews all kinds of organs and intestines, such as stomach, kidney, heart, liver, lungs, and so on. God makes all renewed. It doesn't mean a man in 60s become a man in 20s. Your skin becomes softer and wrinkles disappear without any artificial way. You become like, you become like this by the power of God. Not by a worldly way. You may look much younger, maybe as though you are in your 40s or 50s, even though you are a 60-year-old man. But still, all parts of your body reach the perfect status. For example, even the forefathers of faith who accomplished the whole spirit didn't have the appearance of a young man when you see them with your spiritual eyes. They may have gray hair or they may have a long gray beard, but they do have an imposing look about them. Moreover, even though the prophet Elijah and Apostle Paul had lots of hair when they were young, they became bold as they got older. Boldness is not a disease, but a genetic trait. So it's not a disease. If you enter the spirit in 20s or in early 30s and enter the whole spirit, you don't become bold and you don't lose hair. But there are people who become bold anyway. They are those who inherit the gene of becoming bold from their parents. They lose hair because they inherited the genetic trait from their parents. Parents have a you know, bad eyesight and it is inherited to their children. Then the children come to have bad eyesight as well. It's not a disease. But they inherit it. These are the chances. So there are some who lose their who lose their hair because of some kind of you know diseases. But once they enter the spirit in this case, they have nothing to do with diseases and thus they do not lose hair. It is the same as whether you may have double eyelids or not. It's not a disease not to have a double eyelid, okay? It is not that your appearance becomes that of a young man in his 20s, even when you recover your youth back in your 60s. But still, each part of your body functions better. For example, it is said that in the far-sightedness naturally comes with age. However, this far-sightedness doesn't affect the vision of the man of whole spirit at all.
For example, Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 says, Although Moses was 120 years old when he died, his eye was not dim, nor his vigor abated. Even though God took him at the age of 120, his eye was not dim. It means he was healthy. If his eye were not dim, it means his organs and intestines were healthy, too. Since his stomach, heart, kidney, liver, and lung didn't become weak, God called him at 80, and he was able to do his duty for 40 years. Moses was called by God at the age of 80 to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into Exodus, and then they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Since he was the head of two million, he couldn't find a day to take a rest. But surely Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 says, Although Moses was 120 years old when he died, his eye was not dim, nor his vigor abated. Even at the age of 120, Moses was not affected by farsightedness. He was healthy. The reason can be found in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. God himself said, Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. He was more humble than any other on the face of the earth. It shows how humble he was. The Bible also says he was faithful to all God's household. What about you? Be humble without any evil. And you will be like this. Enter the whole spirit without any form of evil. And no diseases will come into you and all organs and intestines will function well without getting aged. You will rather get your youth back without getting aged. In other words, Moses' body was controlled in the dimension of the Spirit since he entered the whole Spirit. Now, why is it that the aging of the body doesn't take place as the Spirit covers the cell nucleus which controls the body functions? For your reference, I'm going to tell you the phenomena that happen in the cell nucleus. I said, inside the cell nucleus of a man is a chromosome that contains all his genetic information. This chromosome has its end cut off as it continues cell division. This end part of a chromosome is called telomere. Generally, all, as all the normal cells of a human body go through cell division 50 to 100 times, the telomere is all cut off. Then, the cell can no longer accomplish cell division. Then, it gets old and eventually dies. There is a disorder called neprogeria, which is a genetic condition wherein the symptoms of aging are manifested at an early age. The lifespan of a man suffering from progeria averages about 12 years and 8 months. Those born with progeria have short telomere by nature. And so, we can see the length of telomere is intimately related to aging or lifespan. The world's first cloned sheep, Dolly, became old more quickly than other sheep born normally. Dolly was cloned from a somatic cell of a six-year-old sheep. Therefore, Dolly was born with the chromosome of the six-year-old sheep. Since the telomere of Dolly's chromosome was shorter than that of other sheep, its lifespan was also shorter. By the way, among the cells in our body, there are cells that do constant cell division. For example, hair, fingernails, and toenails, they keep on growing even when you are old. They keep on growing again and again. In addition, cancer cells don't die, but they maintain cell division. 
The common characteristic of these cells is that the end of their chromosome doesn't get shorter. It's possible because these cells create an enzyme that helps the cells recover from the shortened telomere. It is called enzyme telomerase. Therefore, if you want to be healed of a form of cancer, all you have to do is prevent the cancer cell from generating this enzyme, telomerase. On the other hand, if you want anti-aging, you can do it by generating a proper amount of this enzyme. Some scientists were awarded 2009 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of a telomere and telomerase that can be a key to anti-aging and cancer cure. Based on this study, an anti-cancer medicine was developed, but it shows bad after effect along with good effect. Even though the medicine is injected to target specific cells, which have active cell division like a cancer cell, it kills not only those cancer cells, but also the cells that create hair, fingernails, and toenails as well. That's why those patients who receive treatments for cancer show the side effects of losing hair, fingernails, and toenails. So those who receive cancer treatment constantly lose their hair and experience memory loss as well as their fingernails and toenails. However, if God works, the light of His power precisely works only on the cancer cell. If a cancer cell is prevented from creating telomerage, the cancer will naturally die. Moreover, if those aging cells are forced to create telomerage properly, it may prevent aging. As you get old, you come to have wrinkles over your face, and your skin loses its elasticity. However, once you come into the spirit, wrinkles will disappear. If you come into the whole spirit, fine wrinkles may disappear too. So, the big wrinkles may remain still, but all fine wrinkles disappear and the skin will get softer. If you enter the whole spirit in 40s, your skin will become like that of in 20s. But those who enter the whole spirit in their 50s or 60s, their skin will get softer by 10 or 20 years back. The cells that form your skin become active so that your skin becomes softer and more elastic. Since your skin don't get aged, the skin will be more elastic. People who work in a beauty shop say that you know, those who are aged lose elasticity of their skin. But you don't need to worry about it because your skin will become more softer and more elastic. Your skin will become better and younger. I said, you will no longer become aged, but also you may recover your youthfulness once you come into the whole Spirit. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your love and grace. Bless this message that they heard today to become faith and life in them. Father God, let it become faith. Bless it to become life. Bless them to come into the Spirit and the whole Spirit quickly so that they can escape from aging and let them recover youth back. Father God, please work on them so that their organs and intestines can be renewed and receive your power and grace. Bless them so that their infirmities can become normal and strong. Father God, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN and Mammin TV viewers, and those who are receiving this prayer via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues, and nerves, 
all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them, be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. What is the seed of life? Adam, as a living being, had the breath of life in his body, which was a small part of God's original light. After he sinned, the breath of life remained as a trace in the form of a small seed. When we accept Jesus Christ, we are forgiven of our sins and born of the Holy Spirit. And then the seed of life that has remained as a trace of the breath of life can sprout and grow. If the seed of life sprouts and grows, our body is managed in a spiritual dimension. Dear viewing audience, Through the message of Dr. J. Rock Lee, may you let the seed of life sprout and grow within you and lead a healthy and blessed life.